This week has been absolutely packed with groundbreaking news, so let's dive right in. Kling AI has just dropped their 2.0 master model, and it's a genuine game changer in the video generation space. Unlike previous models that could only create short, choppy clips, Kling 2.0 Master can generate videos at full 1080p resolution, running at a smooth 30 frames per second, and for up to 2 minutes. That's a massive leap forward. They've also introduced custom frame definition, uh, which gives creators precise control over specific moments in their videos. This helps solve one of the biggest problems with AI-generated videos keeping characters and scenes consistent all the time. Think about what it actually means for content creators, marketeers, educators, and filmmakers. You can now create high-quality promotional videos or educational content just from a text description. Not to be outdone, Google has brought its VO2 video generation model to Gemini Advanced subscribers, putting them in direct competition with OpenAI's Sora. Gemini Advanced users can now create 8 second video clips at 720p resolution that could be easily shared on platforms like TikTok and YouTube. There is also an experimental feature called Whisk that lets you create videos from image prompts rather than text. What I find most interesting is that Google DeepMind's CEO has hinted they plan to eventually combine Gemini with Vio. This could potentially enhance Gemini's understanding of the physical world by giving it access to visual processing capabilities. Now, here's where things get interesting. The pricing. Google has revealed that using VO2 will cost 50 cents per second of generated video. That might not sound like much until you do the math. That's 30 bucks per minute or a whooping 1,800 bucks per hour. To put that in perspective, a Google ZipMind researcher compared this to the massive production budget of Avengers Endgame. The pricing structure is crucial for businesses and creators to understand. While these tools are becoming more accessible, high quality, longer form content still carries a significant cost. OpenAI has launched a new family of models called GPT 4.1, including the standard version along with mini and nano variants. In fact, this week I actually reviewed these models, so if you'd like to see a more in-depth analysis, please feel free to check it out on my channel. What's remarkable about these models is their massive 1 million token context window. In plain English, this means they can process around 750 words at once. That's equivalent to a small novel. This allows them to understand much more complex tasks and longer documents than previous models. OpenAI has specifically optimized these models for coding tasks, claiming that GPT-4.1 outperforms previous models like GPT-4.0 on coding benchmarks. This is huge news for developers who rely on AI assistance for programming tasks. In a surprising move, OpenAI announced they'll soon remove GPT-4.5 from their API. Despite releasing it just a few months ago in February, developers will only have access to it until July 14th, after which they'll need to switch to another model, with GPT 4.1 being positioned as the replacement. OpenAI claims that GPT 4.1 offers similar or even better performance at a much lower cost. What's interesting is that GPT 4.5 will remain available in ChatGPT for paying customers. This suggests that while GPT 4.5 is powerful, it may simply be too expensive for OpenAI. OpenAI has unveiled two reasoning models this week called O3 and O4 Mini, designed to think through questions more thoroughly before providing answers. These models introduce something truly fascinating. They can think with images. This means you can upload photos, diagrams for the models to analyze and incorporate into their reasoning process, like web browsing, code execution, and image generation to help formulate better responses. OpenAI is calling O3 its most advanced reasoning model ever, outperforming previous models in areas like math, coding, science, and visual understanding. This represents a significant step towards creating AI systems that can approach problems more like humans do, by taking time to analyze, reason, and use multiple sources of information before responding. A concerning trend has emerged where people are using JGBT's new reasoning models to figure out the location shown in uploaded photos. So the model's ability to crop, rotate, and zoom in on images makes this possible, raising significant privacy concerns. Surprisingly, even older models without explicit image reasoning capabilities could sometimes achieve similar results. OpenAI has acknowledged 
acknowledged the issue and claims to have added safeguards to prevent identification of private individuals, but it just highlights the ongoing challenge of balancing AI capabilities with privacy protections. This serves as an important reminder that as AI becomes more capable of understanding visual data, we need to be increasingly careful about what information might be inadvertently revealed in the images we share. In one of the most fascinating applications of AI I've seen recently, Google's DeepMind has created an AI model called Dolphin Gemma to help understand dolphin vocalizations. Trained on data from Wild Dolphin Project, this model can analyze dolphin sounds and even generate dolphin-like sound sequences. What's particularly impressive is that it's efficient enough to run on smartphones. This summer, researchers plan to use Google's Pixel 9 smartphone to create a platform that can generate synthetic dolphin sounds and listen for matching replies from real dolphins. This project represents an exciting frontier in using AI to bridge the communication gap between humans and other intelligent species. This could lead to breakthrough discoveries about how dolphins communicate and potentially open up new ways for us to interact with them. Now let's talk about the export restrictions. Nvidia's H20 AI chips now require a license to be exported to China, following new US government restrictions. The US government cited concerns that these chips may be used in a supercomputer in China as the main reason for this indefinite requirement. This is particularly significant because the H20 was the most advanced AI chip NVIDIA could previously export to China under existing regulations. This development comes after reports that the chip was allegedly used to train models from a China-based startup, prompting government officials to call for stronger controls. NVIDIA anticipates a significant financial impact from these restrictions highlighting the growing tensions surrounding AI technology development between major global powers. Anthropic has announced that its AI chatbot Claude now integrates with Google Workspace, allowing it to search through your emails in Gmail, calendar events, and Google Docs. This integration is rolling out in beta to subscribers of Anthropic's higher tier plans. While Google's Gemini and OpenAI's JGPT have some level of workspace integration, Anthropic is one of the first third-party AI companies to offer such close connection to Google's productivity suite. What makes this particularly useful is that Claude can now provide more personally tailored responses without requiring you to repeatedly upload files or craft detailed prompts. Anthropic assures users that data is properly managed, authenticated, and isolated, ensuring that Claude cannot access or transfer data between different users' connected services. This represents a significant step toward AI assistants that can seamlessly integrate with the tools we already use daily. According to reports, OpenAI is building its own social media network Network that could be similar to X, formerly known as Twitter. While still in early stages, there is reportedly an internal prototype focused on ChatGPT's image generation that includes a social feed. It's still unclear whether it is going to be launched as a standalone app or will be integrated inside ChatGPT app. This move would put OpenAI in direct competition with Elon Musk's X and Meta's platforms. This could also provide OpenAI with access to real-time data to further train its AI models, which should be incredibly valuable. OpenAI CEO Sam Altman has reportedly been seeking feedback on this project privately. If launched, this could represent a significant shift in how users interact with AI-generated content in a social context. Microsoft researchers claim to have developed the largest scale one-bit AI model to date. What makes this bitnet model special is that it's designed to be hyper-efficient and can run on regular CPUs, including Apple's M2 chip. Unlike standard AI models with complex numerical parameters, BitNet quantizes these values to just three possibilities, minus one, zero, and one. In practical terms, this means the models require significantly less memory and computing power, making them potentially much more accessible for everyday devices. The researchers claim that despite these simplifications, their model outperforms traditional models of similar sizes on certain benchmarks, testing math and common sense reasoning. This development could be crucial for making AI more accessible on devices with limited resources, potentially allowing more powerful AI to run directly on your phone or laptop without requiring cloud connections. On the safety front, OpenAI has announced a new system to monitor its latest reasoning models, specifically for prompts related to biological and chemical threats. This system aims to 
prevent the models from providing advice that could be used to carry out harmful attacks. OpenAI acknowledges that their more capable models like O3 and O4 Mini represent a significant increase in capability and therefore pose new risks. The safety-focused reasoning monitor is custom-trained to understand OpenAI's content policies and will instruct the models to refuse to answer prompts related to buy risks. Internal testing suggests that models decline risky prompts the vast majority of the time. This proactive approach to safety is crucial as AI becomes more powerful and potentially capable of providing dangerous information. It's a recognition that with greater capabilities comes greater responsibility. What an incredible week in AI! We are seeing tremendous advances in video generation with Clink 2.0 and Google's VO2, while OpenAI continues to push the boundaries with their new reasoning models and coding capabilities. Meanwhile, innovative applications like Google's Dolphin communication project shows how diverse AI potential truly is. The challenges are clear too, from privacy concerns with image analysis to expert restrictions on AI chips and need for stronger safety measures as models become more capable. What do you think about these developments? Which one excites or concerns you the most? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe for more AI news every week. Until next time, stay weird, stay curious and I'll see you in the next one.